Okay, we got a 2003 Toyota Echo with a misfire trouble code. And what I want to do with this one is walk you through how to check this four pin coil over plug design ignition system. We can stay low tech first. And by low tech, what we can do is, well, of course, we'll read the trouble code. And I'll get you a quick shot over at the scan tool. It is a cylinder number four misfire detected, PO304. So there's your shot of the code. And what we want to do, because this is a constant miss, we can hear it, we can feel it, is we can stay low tech first. And we're going to do a cylinder drop test and make sure that we're identifying the proper cylinder. And if we are in fact dealing with the number four, then we'll go through the ignition checks on the number four cylinder. Of course, there's still compression and fuel you have to worry about, but we're gonna start with the ignition. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this design is I'm going to disconnect the coil and we're gonna listen for an RPM drop and then we'll go from there. So go ahead and start it up. Not sure if you can hear how this engine's running. It definitely has a dead miss. I'm gonna start with the number one, just so you can hear it, I'll unplug this one. You hear it get worse. We got a broken bolt on this number three for this coil. I'm not worried too much about that. I'm gonna to go to the number four. That's the one we have a code for. Unplug it, no change whatsoever. Do the number three so you can hear it. Got an RPM drop. Number two. So you hear RPM drops on one, two, and three. No RPM drop on number four. Go ahead and shut that off. Okay, so we know it is the number four cylinder that is misfired. And what we found so far is that our scan tool and our trouble code is indicating the correct cylinder. We always have to be careful with misfire trouble codes. Sometimes they identify wrong cylinders, but we've got this, we've got this correct. And what we want to think about with the number four is, is it spark? Is it fuel? Is it compression? And there's a lot of different ways that we can attack this vehicle. One of the things that we can do is a clear flood mode crank and then listen to it to see if it has consistent compression sound. I've shown this in other videos, so we can do that real quick. I'm gonna unplug these coils and I'm gonna have you crank this and we're just gonna listen to the way that this thing cranks. As a sound test, this would be basically our relative compression test that we're doing. Go ahead and crank it. Keep cranking until I tell you to stop. Okay, good. What I'm saying based on that sound is this is most likely not a compression problem. So from there, what we can do would be go after the injector or go after spark. And I think for this video, let's go after the spark because we wanna really emphasize how to check these four pin, four wire coil over plug designs. Real quick word of caution when you're doing cylinder drop tests like I just did where you're unplugging ignition coils, you're going to set ignition coil primary circuit faults when you do that on most of these systems. So be careful with that. You know, these are false trouble codes. And these would be sensed off of the IGF circuit. That's an ignition confirmation signal that Toyota uses. We'll be talking about that as we go through this the computer is able to recognize by monitoring that circuit which coil has an open circuit with it. So false trouble codes we set, be careful with that. Okay, a couple of quick things that we can do with this if we don't have a scope, and, and I've done this in other videos, just to figure out if we have maybe a, a bad coil or a bad plug or if it's an injector problem. 
there's a lot of different directions we can go. And I've shown some of them, doing tailpipe emission tests, see if your HCs are high. And there's some variables with that. You know, the computer may shut the injector off. We're gonna focus on the ignition system for this. And one of the things that you can do would be to swap the coils and see if your RPM drop test moves. If your dead cylinder moves with the coil, then you know you have a coil problem. You can do the same thing with the plugs. For our purpose, we're gonna focus on this number four. I'm not gonna do that. I've already taken the bolt out, and what I wanna do is just start the car and do a simple output check of this coil to see if there's spark on it. And this is an acceptable method too. There's nothing wrong with this. And again, the difficult part is to show all the procedures on one car that's just not possible. And it makes for really a long video. So we're gonna focus on the spark, just have a test light connected to ground, and I'm going to hold it here and I'm looking for a spark to come out of this coil. It's that simple. So go ahead and start that up. Okay, shut it off. And I have to be honest with you guys, you're watching this at a later time, I already knew that this coil didn't have spark, but I wanted to show you the procedures that I went through previously. This is what we did. We moved coils around, it moved with the coil, we pulled the coil back out, we did a spark output test of that coil, and we knew there was no spark. Now the issue at hand here is gonna be is there a control issue with this coil? This is a four pin coil. And on four pin designs and three pin design coil ever plug systems, the transistor's inside of here. But our concern is the computer wiring, the coil wiring and making sure that that is good before we replace the coil. So what I wanna do first is I wanna take you up to the board and we're gonna talk about the internal design with this, and then we're gonna do some checks and see what we have and be able to make the call with 100% certainty using the scope. Okay, first thing that I wanna share with you guys, this is in section 22 of my book, No Start, No Spark Diagnosis, and this is on page 18, and I have a generic picture of a three-wire coil. This is a four-wire, but what I'm showing up here is a three-wire. And the reason I have this picture drawn is to show you that there is a transistor that is inside of this coil itself. There, so there's no external igniter, there's no external module. It's done inside of the coil itself. The coil primary is right here. I'm not drawing the secondary in this picture to simplify it. We're just looking at a primary circuit. And so with that, here's your positive feed coming in. And then this circuit where the transistor is would be the ground side or the control side. This is coil negative right here. And this is coil positive. When this transistor turns on, this will connect this circuit to ground directly. So one of the things with this design is you cannot view coil negative control voltage. On most coils, you would have a circuit that you have access to coil negative because you have an igniter, a module, a driver that's external. Let's call this the ICM. This would be coil negative. This is coil positive. You can connect a scope here and view the coil negative control, the voltage spikes, the on-off control. You can see it. On this design, you cannot because coil negative is right here. And this side of the transistor is the side that's going to switch from high to low voltage when the driver turns on. This side of it is a ground all the time. So you cannot see coil negative voltage on this design. On four pin or three pin coils, you cannot see coil negative voltage. So if you want to see control, you have to use an amp probe. We want to know, is this coil turning on or turning off? We are limited, we cannot do this. But what we can do is measure with an amp clamp on either the feed side or, well we don't have this wire, but we have this wire, this ground. 
we can measure current flow on the ground, we can measure current flow on the coil positive. So either here or here would be one of the tests. Stupid air guns. We good? All right, we got a little background noise in that last section, an air hammer in the shot. What I was saying is to measure control on this type of coil, we can't view coil negative voltage, but there's other things we can do. We can measure our current flow here or here, which will give us our current ramp pattern. We can do that. Another thing that can be done is the base circuit can be viewed for control from the computer. And the way that this circuit works is the computer is going to send a small square wave on this circuit, which is going to turn this transistor on and off. Every single one of these coil ever plug designs with the transistor that's inside, you will see a square wave pattern on that one single wire. So that's another method that we can use to tell us whether or not this car has control. We have no spark, we know that, right? Our concern is our coil bad, do we have a wiring problem or do we have a computer problem? And if it went in the direction of a computer, then we'd have to check inputs and things like that but it's just a good direction test. The next page I have, this is on, this was a case study on a 2007 Honda Accord. You can see that this control, this red trace, the square wave, is what is turning this coil on and off. When the base circuit gets turned on, you can see that is the exact time that our current increases through the primary circuit. And when the base circuit is turned off is the exact time that our current flow stops. So if we go back to this page and plug that in, we have a square wave here that is occurring. This square wave controls the base. As this circuit is high, we have current flow taking place. When the circuit, base circuit drops to no volts, we turn the base off. We interrupt current flow and these go hand in hand. The ramp for this coil would go hand in hand with the base circuit square wave. That's what I'm showing in this picture. So we're gonna plug in these tests on this coil. So now you might be thinking what's different about the four pin design? Three pin design, four pin design. This is the wiring diagram for this Toyota Echo. You see we have four different coils. You see each one has four wires. Our Common wires would be the black and red. This is the feed circuit. You would need the rest of the diagram to see that. It comes from the ignition switch, actually. So all of the coils share a power feed. Another shared circuit is going to be our ground, which is our white black. You can see all of these, this splice here, all of the grounds are shared. If you refer to the other Toyota Echo case study that I have already up on YouTube where we had a bad computer ground, bad block ground, it was a no communication issue. This ground for these coils is in that location. So the nice thing about working on the same car again is I know where that ground is. How nice would it be to put my amp clamp here and measure all four coils? I can do that. Principles of current flow. We can measure the current from the primary circuit on all four of these coils right here at this location if we choose to. Of course, we can just focus on our number four if we want to as well. That's the one that has the issue. So we have our common power. We have our common ground. What are these other two wires? There's another wire, this yellow one that's a common wire. And on the wiring diagram, I don't, need, I don't have the whole thing up here, but I'll just tell you what it says. This yellow wire comes to the computer and it says IGF. IGF. And then the single wire right here is the IGT for the number four. IGT for the number four. This would be the IGT for the number three. Again, IGT number two, and so an IGT number one. So we have our individual wires, and really with that info, you guys already know what the IGT wire is. 
That IGT wire is that little small square wave that turns the base of the transistor on inside of this coil. This IGT wire would be in my generic diagram here. This is off of a Honda, but it would be the same thing. This would be the IGT circuit. Computer, this is my engine computer, talking to the igniter or really controlling the base of the transistor inside of the coil. That's your IGT circuit. Toyota uses that abbreviation IGT. IGT is ignition timing is where they get that abbreviation, ignition timing, IGT, ignition timing signal. So the four pin, the fourth wire is the IGF circuit. That's this yellow circuit. IGF would be ignition confirmation. It's a monitored circuit. Diagnostics for this is really no different than the three pin. We still have a main power, we still have a main ground, and we still have a main timing signal, an on off square wave, zero five volt, zero four volt. The difference would be the IGF circuit. Now I can't give you the internals of this, but here's what I know from monitoring these in the past. When you have a primary field that collapses in, in a coil, we get a very large voltage spike. And what's inside of these coils is a circuit that creates a signal in response to that voltage spike. And what it will look like if you were to look at say the ramp this would be the coil on, this would be the coil off. That's where your voltage spike is going to occur in a secondary or in a primary pattern. You see 12, actually it would kind of look like this. To put voltage over the current, you would have a primary pattern that might look something like this in this area. This is where we get that collapse of the field. That is where your IGF signal occurs. You're going to have a signal that will be a, a conditioned square wave that occurs exactly where the spark occurs. It creates a signal. What's a computer use that for? For confirmation, ignition confirmation, that that coil just fired. That's what the IGF signal's for. Okay? Now, judging by our vehicle here, and no spark in that number four coil shows you the limitations of the IGF circuit, doesn't it? It's not a perfect monitored circuit. We have a problem with this coil, yet we have no IGF type trouble code. We have no coil trouble code. That coil trouble code did not occur until I unplugged the coil. And then we saw a coil signal, a trouble code for that coil because of no IGF signal. Now what you might be thinking of right now is how would the computer know if we're sharing IGF circuits? How would the computer know which one's which? Think about this. This computer is responsible, there's going to be some chip in here that's going to be responsible for controlling the four coils. It sends out that small square wave, right? So you got four different coils that are being fired at different times at, at in firing order sequence. This would be the timing chip in here. You're going to turn this one on and off, then this one, then this one, then this one, and go in order. So my question to you would be, does the computer know which one it's turning on and off? Take that chip and then run one, say, IGF signal coming in. That IGF signal is also going to be staggered too, isn't it? We're not going to fire two coils at the same time. So that IGF signal is going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and that signal is coming back. What's the computer do? It coordinates this one with this one, and it wants to see them occur. When this one turns off, think about this, square wave. This is where coil primary begins. This is where coil primary ends. When does the spark occur? When the primary stops. So where does the IGF signal take place? If the computer sends this out, it wants to see the IGF signal occur right in line 
with this one. And what does that tell the computer about that coil? It's good. We don't need four separate IGF circuits. It's sharing the IGF. Okay, one of the hard parts about doing this is to give you guys direction and, and what we can do. And there isn't one right way to do this. I think that becomes more difficult as I continue to do this, is to show a procedure and then alter that procedure and show you something else. For this one, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to go. I'm going to choose the white black, which is my ground wire for my amp clamp. We're going to put our amp clamp here, so we're going to watch our coil primary current on the ground side. We could also use the power feed wire if we wanted to. It would not make a difference whatsoever. We can use either one. Current flow does not change. If you go to this picture right here, this generic picture, if I have current flow coming through this coil winding on its way through the transistor to ground, if you have six amps of current coming in, you have six amps of current coming out. Yes, voltage has dropped, but current flow has not changed. You can measure current here as easy as you can measure current here. Take your pick. For what I'm doing for this video, for no particular reason, I'm going to pick the ground one. The next thing that we want to look at would be this wire, this IGT, coming in. That's our base circuit. Now depending on what we have for this amp test, we may not need to do that. It's as simple as this. We have no spark on this coil, right? If we have a current if we have a current ramp pattern, doesn't that tell you the computer's base circuit control is working? So we don't necessarily have to show that, but we'll kind of overkill this a little bit for other situations you might encounter where, okay, maybe we don't have a ramp, so what else do we do? We'll show all the checks. Okay, I said we're checking the amperage on the ground. We're also going to, at the same time, check this IGT circuit right here. So I'm going to back probe this IGT. That's our small square wave. We'll just do them both at the same time. Okay, just a quick shot of my connections. You see my amp clamp is on my white with a black, and my voltage trace is gonna be on my green with a yellow, which is my control signal. So let's go up to the board again and uh, see what they look like. Does that go? Red lights on? Yeah. No. Shop noise is brutal sometimes. All right, scope I'm using is the Pico. I have it hooked up already, so let me go to my desktop, open that up. Okay, I gotta set my channels up. This is the default. You can actually set a default screen for this. I don't have one set. Channel A is my amp clamp. I need to tell it what I'm using, which probe I'm using. So I'm using my 60 amp clamp in the 20 amp mode. And what that does is that's going to set up my scales for me. I'll set it to a minus 5 to 10 amp scale. There's your amperage waveform on the screen. And then my channel B is just going to be a simple voltage trace. And so the normal probe, the default, is going to be volts. And I'm going to set this, I know it's a 5 volt, I'm going to set it to a 10 volt just to make the screen look good. You can, personal preference there, it doesn't matter. It helps to know what you're looking for. You know, I get this a lot, what scope settings should I use? Well, start the car, get your signal and move things around. I mean, you're not going to hurt it. Just be aware of your high voltage coils and injectors where you want to use an attenuator and everything else you're pretty, pretty good with. Time base, I'm on a 50 millisecond screen right now. That might be a little bit uh, too fast to start with, so I'm going to change that so we can see some repetition on the screen. This is a one second screen, that's probably way too much. But the nice thing with the Pico is we can zoom in later on that picture. So go ahead and start that. We have a hose on this car? Yes. Okay. All 
I set that off for a second? I have my, my amp clamp was upside down. Uh, I can actually invert it on here or I can go over to the car and flip my amp clamp, which is what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and start that back up again. I was looking at this line to tell me that. One of the reasons why I like to have my zero line for my amp rev off the bottom of the screen so I can tell when it's inverted. My scales are off here, so I'm going to change that. We'll go to a 20 amp. Good. Pretty high spikes on there. And we really don't need this much repetition in here. We can drop that down. I can also set a trigger in here too, which will stabilize this. And we can focus on this area right here. We're getting some interference, some noise from the other coils that are all sharing a power feed. And I can filter this, but really right here is where we want to focus. tool in the shop. I hate that tool. I've always hated that tool. I hate it more while I'm filming. Alright. Guys, do we have enough information right here to tell us that we need an ignition coil? Yes. Do we have control? Yes. Our control is our amperage waveform here. That's the blue trace. This is our current flow through the circuit. And as I told you guys, Let's go in on this just a little bit more. Get a little bit more detail here. As I told you guys, this red trace, which we can see is zero to about four volts, that's pretty typical. This is what I'm seeing across the board on the coil over plugs. The control circuit is zero to four volts square wave. That's the computer's control of this coil. Is the computer turning the coil on? Yes, it is. So how's the computer? It's good. How are the inputs, cam crank signals? If this signal's here, those are good too. Then we have an amperage waveform. This thing's upwards of um, 11 amps. I don't know if my if I zeroed my probe properly here. Let's take a quick measurement. And that's close enough to zero, huh? And then the top of that, see what kind of number we got. So we're at 11.94 for, or 11.93 our delta between the two, almost 12 amps. That's probably one of the highest current ramps I've seen on an ignition coil. Be curious to see what one of the other ones look like. looks like. Maybe we should take a picture of that. Or what we could do is replace the coil and get a picture of the after. Sometimes aftermarket coils can change a characteristic though of the waveform, so I think I want to look at one of the other ones as a point of reference. And I think that's where it would help to look at all four at the same time. You can look at all, remember I said originally that other ground you can use? All right. There are certain faults in an ignition coil that you can't see in a primary ramp, and one of them is the secondary if it's partially shorted or if it's arcing somewhere else. Difficult to see sometimes. Some of the stuff we look at, and I don't know if this is gonna be what the other ones look like or not. I think if I remember doing this before, they all look the same. Here's what we know. We know we need a coil, no question. We have no spark, we have good control. Is there a need to check the coil power or ground in this case? And the answer is no, because of the amount of current flow that I have. This is the highest current flow that I've seen on a coil. So if I had a bad power or bad ground, wouldn't that lower my amperage? So I'm not worried about the power and ground check. We need a coil, no question. There's an area right here that I'm focused on, and I'm not seeing a turn on oscillation here. And this is an indication of a secondary short when you don't see that. And I could be wrong on this design that this is the way the other ones look, but it doesn't change the fact that this needs an ignition coil. I'm going to move these leads to the cylinder next to it 
and we'll take a look at what that one looks like and we'll throw the IGT signal in there too. Not that we need to look at that, but just so you guys can see it, I'm going to move to a known good coil. Go ahead and pause that. Alright, so I got this moved over to the number three and what we're going to do with the number three is just compare what this area looks like right here to what that, uh, that number three looked like. Actually, I probably should save this picture real quick. Let me do that. Okay, can I get one of you guys to start this? We'll see what this one looks like. This is cylinder number three. All right, that works, kill it. Focused on this area here to compare what we were looking at before. It, it, it's subtle, but there is a difference here. If you look closely at that initial turn on, you will notice a difference here. Right in this area, can you see it? There was kind of a little straight up line on the other one. Amperage looks about the same. I'm about 12 amps of current, but that issue right there, that initial characteristic looks a little bit different. Pretty tough to pick that one out on this design. Let me throw in the IGF signal here too and we'll look at that at the same time. So can you start that back up for me again? I already have it connected, I just need to turn on my other channel. Go ahead. Okay. Picture's a little bit noisy, but I'm not worried about filtering that right now. There's your IGF signal, and I was I was incorrect in the location and where that thing actually is created. This green trace is your IGF signal. It is not charged by the collapsing field. It must be charged by the current flow coming in. I'm not sure the internal circuitry, but this would be your IGF signal for the number three. You see it's coordinated right with it. And the other thing that you'll notice with this picture is that our IGF is actually in my other channels too. Let's just clean this up a little bit for viewing here on the camera. Notice that there's your number three, here's your number three again, and then you have an IGF signal all the way across. So you have, this is IGF, IGF, IGF. That's because it's a shared circuit. What's creating those other ones? There are other cylinders that are firing in here. Okay? IGF, IGT signals, Toyota, they've done this forever. And again, this is a known good coil. That filtering has changed our characteristics here a little bit. Got to be careful filtering if you want detail. All right, we're going to change that coil, see what the new one looks like. But really, that's pretty much good enough for us to call a coil, replace the coil, and I'll get you a shot of the engine running, running good after we're done. Okay, we got the coil in. Uh, we're still gonna we're gonna change the plugs and do the whole thing. One coil, change all the plugs. But for now, we just threw the coil in to get an aftershock. Go ahead and start the car for me, Tim, please. This is our number four coil. Focus on this area right here. That looks different. You can see what I mean though by aftermarket coils. What do we see with this aftermarket coil? And as far as the characteristic of the ramp goes, yeah, it's kind of goofy. I, so we don't want to read too much into that. The other IGF signals for the other cylinders, they look pretty much like what we saw previously. So there is a Square wave with another little dip in here. And our new coil, wow, that has a really different look to it, doesn't it? Well, the thing is, is our misfire's gone. And uh, you can see maybe 
All right, well, you can see why an aftermarket cool. Uh, you can see. <laughs> sucks. Oh, man. Let's get an amperage reading on this aftermarket coil. 12.58, so it's a half an amp higher current. This is something to consider, and I have a lot of issues with Nissans where people are changing coils and they're not fixing the problem. And the Nissan, I believe, is a four pin with an IGF circuit, and the fix is to put factory coils in it. So just something to think about when you're doing this, you know, characteristic differences between coil ramps. That looks a lot different. I'm gonna do one more thing, start this car back up. I'm gonna unplug one of the other coils. I want you guys to pay attention to this IGF circuit, the green trace. I'll unplug one of the other coils. Let's see what happens when I unplug one of the other coils, that IGF signal disappeared. That is what the computer is looking at to know that there's a problem with that coil. The characteristic of this one, I mean, I don't like it. It looks a little different than these other ones. I'm going to plug that coil back in. Leave it run. Are we going to worry about this IGF signal looking different than this one? I'm not going to worry about it as long as this car does not set a trouble code and it's running properly. Definitely a different characteristic with that. One more. I'm going to get all the coils on the screen. You can leave that roll. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go to that common feed, that common ground so we can see them all at the same time. Okay, so now, looking at this pattern now, looking at this one, I'm triggered off of this blue trace. And you can see how the, the pattern is going to kind of change on us. You see that? What you need to understand when you're looking at all four coils now, that we're going to really need to change our trigger to make this better a better view. Notice your control circuits changing too. Can you guys see that? It's kind of coming and going. If you want it to focus, Should I talk now? If you want to focus on only the number four, what do you need to do? Change your trigger to something that's unique to the, to the number four. And our trigger that's unique to the number four is on the red trace. So what we can do is change that to channel B and then move this. Well, there's some spikes in there, so that's going to be a little difficult too. See the spike that's triggering off of that spike? It's going to be tough to pick that out. Maybe if I change my slope. It's better, but there's still some red spikes in here. So we're drawing some other pictures. Well, the nice thing about the Pico, let's get a, a longer time base, and then, then we'll zoom in on this. I'm gonna up my sample rate so I don't miss anything. I'll pause that picture there, shut that off. And now we can look at any of the ones we want to. That IGF signal definitely looks different than the rest of these. And I'm not saying that's a problem, but it is a good uh, picture as to maybe why you don't want to run an aftermarket coil. So look at that, look at that pattern. That's our, this, this is our new coil. This would be one that was in the car. this. We'll look at all of it. That's our new coil. That's an existing coil. A 
another existing coil. Ramps look pretty, pretty much the same. There's your fourth one. So we got three coils that look pretty good. One that that doesn't. Imagine you getting this car in with that different coil. You would question that, wouldn't you, if you had a misfire on that cylinder? So just think about that. It's another variable. Hopefully that makes sense a little bit more on coil over plug, how to test them, what the IGF circuit is, what the IGT circuit is. Being confident in making the call, no spark, good control, said we need a coil. Our misfire is gone. I'll get you one last shot of the car so you guys believe me that even though this picture, we don't like it. And it could look better. The ramp's pretty goofy looking that our misfire is now gone and we do have sparks. So I'll get you one more shot and we'll end this. Go ahead and shut that off. Okay, I left my connections in the screen so you can see where I was. This is my coil control signal. This is my IGF signal. I haven't put the bolt in for the coil yet. Do you see where my amp clamp is now connected? There is a main ground wire and it is down in this location. It's the same color. Let's see if I can get you on that loop. I think you can see it right between that rad hose right there. There's a white black ground wire. That's where I was. I was able to measure all four coils from that location. I'm just going to redo my cylinder drop test on the number four, let you guys hear it. Take a listen. So you see that we have a nice RPM change on that coil now. That is a fix. I hope you guys like that.